My name's Ian Keller. Uh, I've been living at Chiswick since 1982, but I've known Chiswick since I was a kid living at Five Dock in 1959. We used to get on our scooters and scooter over here, I think you'd call it. And uh, this used to be all Chiswick here, all Bortfield Drive, the whole horseshoe shape, used to be a box factory. And what would happen is the from Black Wattle Bay, they would send logs up by motorised barges and just down on the waterfront here there was an old stone wharf and a sawmill and they would prepare the wood and make the boxes so to speak. Now we used to come over here, it was all fenced up but they have wonderful bamboo, 10, 12 feet high for kids, fishing rods, bows and arrows and spears, you couldn't help yourself, you'd scoot her over, climb over the fence and break some off. They didn't worry because it was noxious weed, we weren't doing any damage. So that's how I knew what Chiswick was. Now I moved here December 82, and uh, oh, at this stage we still had the wire mill down the road, the BHP wire mill, there wasn't that huge development down there. Uh, a lot more houses, what I'm finding now is that when houses go, up go the townhouses. I'm not mad about it, but that's, that's development. As I understand it, this building, and the number one across the road, eight floors high, was never to be built. And nothing was made of two levels around here. But the developers wanted to use the, it's a beautiful park down on the waterfront. Developers had their eyes on that. And Jack Monday and the Green Band said, no, you can't. Now, I'm hoping I'm not libeling any developers here, but one of them was very close to the Askin government. And to make money, they're going to go broke because they couldn't use the, this is what I've been told, this is urban legend for Chiswick, uh, they couldn't touch the park, so they got somehow got permission to whack up two lots of eight-storey uh, units, uh, blocks, and I'm in one of them, so I can't really be a bitch about high-rises, I live in one. But as you can see, it doesn't really fit the area, but I mean, I still get advised that by long-time residents here, say, oh, we remember that, that was never supposed to be over two floors, all of it. I said, well, that was Parks Development and Mr Askin, and they were very close. That's all I'll say on that subject. <laughs> They're all long dead, so you can't libel the dead now. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people come and go. I was 32 when I moved in here now. I'm now 65, and a lot of the people have either died or moved out. And you get a lot more renters here now. Than when I moved in, it was, I reckon, 75% owners, 25% renters. Well, it's completely changed now. It's more renters. A lot of people own those units for investment purposes. Yeah, it's a bit hard for young bods now to buy here. But it's more professional people living here now than retirees and, dare I say it, working class. I think the prices have forced people out, unfortunately. I don't know how they pay rent here, to tell the truth. These places go for six, seven, eight hundred bucks a week. Two bedroom units, all right, you get a nice view, but you'd want a pretty good job, wouldn't you? You know? We've got professionals and we've got tradesmen. Yeah. And the tradesmen these days are making a fortune. Our plumber brought Unit 15 for $780,000. But uh, good luck to him, he's a young boy. Yeah, young Scott. Well, I went to school with his father at St. Pat Strathfield, Mick Burnicle. It's funny, his mother-in-law went to school with a friend of mine who lives down here. So, yeah, she said she knows Scott's mother went to school. I thought, jeez, I'm starting to feel bloody old. I knew his father, and I'm older than both. I'm older than his father. <laughs> Yeah, you know these things, but you start talking to people and, and things like that, you know, it's just a... So there's a community here. It's not like everyone's isolated or, you know, who are you or anything like this. For the people, you've been here a while, you, you just know them. And the community area seems to be the bus stop or the wharf, but especially the bus stop. So, yeah, no, it's a pleasant area to live in. You get to know the regulars. Tony's the shop downstairs. Tony's been there 21 years. Going for walks, I do my walking, and... Uh, Sleep and say, oh, I saw you, how are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, so you get to know the regular people. You might know them all by name, but you nod, good day, how's things going? Yeah, some Sundays, I'll put this bum on that couch and I think, what's on the idiot box? And say, hang on, blue sky, blue water. Why am I reaching for the idiot box guide, mm. the remote control? Get off your backside and go for a walk for an hour. You can walk right around the bay up to the old Glazel Bridge and back round again. Get that blue sky, blue water. That's part of living in Chiswick. Walks yes. here are magnificent. Yeah. I find Chiswick to be a, a very nice area to live in, to tell the truth. As being, a, of course, I'm a long-term resident now. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here till I die. When you get that cloud, 
you get that burnt orange, pink, red. It looks like yep. an old log fire. That's going. That's just, you know, the embers. It's just got that colour. Every time I have visitors over, I always say, stand here on a fine day, and I get the Harbour Ridge in the background. They just see yeah. this wonderful. We fit a hundred people up on the roof. You get all the lights. But I have people over here. Just got the little Weber barbecue. Put four chairs out here. Put the esky, a few beers on ice. And just watch the fireworks and watch the boats going up. Mm -hmm.